I've had a few people ask me over the last few weeks, how do I know how much food to put up for our family? So that's what we're gonna talk about today. to be talking and working today this time of year i don't have much time to be just sitting around so talking and working works right i am harvesting my tapazio beans these are some of my favorites if you hadn't heard of them you really should try them um they're like i like to explain them to people they're like leftover pintos you ever had day old pintos that sit in the refrigerator overnight and they're all thick and yummy yeah, that's these tapazio beans for you. They are so good, and I am a pinto connoisseur, and for me to say something that is as good or better than pintos, y'all know what I mean. <laughs> the bugs have slap eat up my plants, though. Yeah, they've pretty much all but killed them. There ain't a leaf one left on them, hardly. So, I don't... When I'm trying to figure out what I need to put up for the year, I'm just going to tell y'all, I am not organized enough to sit down and write that down, what we need to plant, so on and so forth. I'm just, that's not my, <laughs> ain't my personality. Uh, my brain is what I like to call organized chaos. I had a patient one time tell me that meant I was a genius, so I'm just going to take her up on that and agree that maybe that means I'm a genius. I don't know. <laughs> But anyways, um, I'm just going to kind of walk y'all through my thought process. So first things first, things like these October beans, we always plant a row of them. Just one row. Um, I have probably five jars left from last year. We eat these with uh, different meals, you know, just whenever I feel like cooking them. So with something like this, I know we're going to plant them every year because we just, that's just what we do. And uh, I just can what I got. The same thing kind of goes for my crowder peas. Uh, what we call crowder peas, I think they're called colossal crowder pea, colossal peas, something like that. Anyways, we always plant those too. Um, now I'm going to tell you, I went down there and I looked at what I got left. That's one way I judge it, I kind of look and see what I've got left from last year. Because if it's a huge bumper crop, I go ahead and uh, I try to put up what the good Lord gave me because he gave it to me for a reason, kind of the way I look at it. Um, but I've got probably 20 jars of that left from last year. I canned a lot of crowner peas last year. So I may take it a little easier this year, or you don't never know. I mean, my peas may not make as well this year. Um, you just, we had that happen. I've had it happen. Whatever these little yellow fuzzy things are, y'all tell me, y'all know what these things are. That's what's all over these. I don't reckon they sting. They ain't stung me yet. Golly. Pink eyed, the pink eyed purple hole peas. Last year was our first year trying those. Absolutely loved them. Loved them, loved them, loved them. They were wonderful. Um, I've got maybe two or three jars left of those. Didn't can a ton of those last year because I didn't have a ton to can. So now this year, I've got two rows of those, and I was taking it easy, not cooking those a whole lot because I didn't want to run out um, because they were so, so good. So what I'll do with those this year, y'all look at that. They're little yellow fuzzy things. Whatever that is, that's what's all over these plants. I don't know what that darn thing is. Um, golly, it's on that one. Go on. Um, but I will, I will can all of them this year. I will can, we, we planted, like I said, two rows of them and we got a row down to Creek Bottom. I forgot about them too. So we'll, um, I will put up all of them this time. That way I don't have to be so stingy on those. So I freeze my corn on the cob and I'll be showing y'all that. When that time comes, I freeze. Uh, I like to uh, 
the kids really like it on the cob better than they like canned corn. I like it both ways. I like to do what they call fried corn with my canned corn and it's really good. Y'all tell me what these critters are. I'm going to show y'all here. What are them things? They're all over them. I remember seeing them last year too, but I don't think they were this bad. There we go. Little spiky yellow things there. Look under here. Was it under that one? Yeah. Look under there. All over it. But anyways, back to what I was talking about, about the corn. All right, so I know that we eat corn on the cob for supper around once a week maybe not every week i occasionally cook it for lunch though too so because i'm telling y'all my kids man they love some corn on the cob the way that i freeze it each freezer bag usually holds around six ears of corn that's thundering i wonder if it's gonna rain golly y'all just like squirrel but anyways told y'all organized chaos in my brain i know that each bag roughly holds six ears of corn and this is just coming from years of experience this kind of my thought process is just kind of getting in this routine so i put up i know that i put up 50 bags last year because i counted them and that was my goal last year 50 bags because there's 52 weeks in a year and i i wanted to see how far 50 bags would get us um and we've been out of corn for probably a month so I was pretty, I was pretty close with that, but kids are getting older. Kids are eating more when they're getting older. <laughs> so this year I may try to put up 60 to 70 bags. It's a lot of corn, but I want it to last until we have corn next year. Uh, luckily we planted a lot of sweet corn. So I hope good Lord willing the creek don't rise and deer don't get in the garden that I'll have that. As far as canned corn goes, I may do one canner full of corn if I have excess corn. Uh, but I, again, last year, we had a bumper crop of sweet corn and I canned probably 50 pints, if not more, it may have been more than that. It was a lot of pints of corn. And I still probably at least have 20 of those left. Uh, like I said, canned corn is not something that my family eats a ton of because the kids don't really, they like it on the cob better. And that's fine with me. I mean, one's just as easy to cook as the other. And I don't believe my beans was quite done making, but my plants are dead. So that goes sometimes. I go and I check my inventory when it comes this time of year. To see what I really need to be focused on and what I can kind of let slide if I need to um, as far as putting away food. In our potato harvest video the other day, I had a couple people comment wanting to know what in the world we was going to do with all the potatoes. Now, I'm going to tell y'all, there's four mouths feeding this house for at least lunch and supper. Lunch most days, not every day, but lunch most days, at least for me and the kids, and supper every day except for the occasional uh, date night to the Mexican restaurant. So we'll, we go through the potatoes. We, um, I mean, cause I cook them all kinds of ways and we have potatoes at least two to three times a week, if not more than that. And so, you know, that, that puts a good dent in them. And plus we wanna have enough to have seed potatoes for when it's time to plant them again so we don't have to buy seed potatoes. So that's what we do with all those potatoes. We eat them and I usually have potatoes till February or March. And then, I mean, when we don't have our potatoes, we just don't have potatoes. So we have several months that we go and we just don't have potatoes. I'm gonna can some of those little tiny ones and that'll be some, you know, for when we don't have potatoes. I did that a couple years ago, and for whatever reason, I didn't can any last year. I don't remember why. I had a lot going on last year when we got our potatoes up, so that was probably why. But I'm planning on canning some of the little little ones. So maybe that'll be a video, too. I'll show you all that, too. 
I got my bucket full anyway. So I'm going to shell these for now, see how many I get. I uh, may wait a couple days and go out and pick the rest of them. I picked, I don't know, I didn't pick quite half of them. They've done pretty good, even though the bugs out killed them. Um, so anyways, back to what we were talking about. So something I forgot to mention, like, towards the beginning is this is not exactly a year's worth of food that I'm contemplating in my mind putting up. So, old wives tell, something I've always heard, it's bad luck to open your newly canned food until after the first frost. I think that's something that the old timer said um, to make sure that their food would last them through the winter months. But I try to go by that and, you know, we eat... We eat whatever, whatever's coming in fresh in the garden. When it's garden season, we're eating whatever's coming in fresh. We're not opening the cans of food. Um, you know, we may eat green beans every single night, but that's what's coming in right now. It's what's in season. Same way with the fall crops. Um, we just eat what's coming in. So, technically, my food, I want enough food to last me. From the time I open it, which would be around probably October, until the, at least the following garden season. So let's say May-ish um, is when stuff very first starts coming in. So what is that? Six months? Seven, eight months? Something like that. So it's not necessarily 12 months worth of food. Now, let's talk about pickles for a little bit. Jacob would live off of dill pickles. I'm going to tell you that right now. He would absolutely live off of them. And that is perfectly fine with me. It's better for him than reaching for some goldfish or something. So if he's young and wants to eat dill pickles, I'll make him all the dill pickles he wants to eat. So he goes through about a quart um, every other week, roughly. Sometimes he doesn't eat that much. Sometimes it's a little more. So like my goal for my dill pickles is to put up around 25 quarts that's about what i put up last year i may have put up actually i think i put up like 30 last year and i've got four or five left now that's all well and good i could make a ton more for the cucumbers that i have coming in but something to think about is in my experience with the dill pickles anyway after they get about a year or so old they kind of start losing their tang a little bit um the texture is not as great I don't know, they're just not as appetizing. Um, like I said, just personal opinion. But now, my sweet pickles, the 14-day icicle pickles. Now, the older they get, the better they are. Like, we're eating some from 2021 right now, and they are delicious. Delicious. Um, but I'm, what's like those? Unless I just absolutely decide that i'm gonna make those like if i don't have anything else to make with my cucumbers i may make a batch but i don't need any i right now in my basement i probably have hmm, i wouldn't be scared to say 50 60 jars of icicle pickles from last year and year before last because when you make them well when i make them anyway i make them in a crock and so, I mean, that's a, it's a pile of pickles, okay? And we don't eat those as often. We don't, um, most of the time it's the dill pickles that go the quickest. Now, something new I discovered last year, speaking of pickles, is bread and butter pickles. I love bread and butter pickles. They were some of my favorites. Probably some of the, the best pickles I've ever made, in my opinion. Now, not everybody likes bread and butter pickles, but I do. Love them. So last year, I only made maybe eight pints of bread and butter pickles because I was experimenting. Because, you know, I didn't know exactly how good they were going to be. I had never made homemade bread and butter pickles. I only made those few. This year, with my extra cucumbers that I'm not using for my dill pickles, are going to bread and butter pickles. Because I do have so many 14-day pickles left over, so I'm not going to worry about those. So that's kind of my thought process as far as pickles go. Now, back to, you know, we mentioned green beans a while ago. 
green beans is something that God usually blesses us with plenty every season. You know, these jade bush beans, they put off a ton of beans. The Kentucky Wonders, they put off a ton of beans, like from just a few plants. So, if you plant a bunch of plants, you're going to have a bunch of beans. I uh, think right now, I've probably got, again, 60 or 70 quarts from last year and year before last combined. I'm about out of year before last, but, you know, I canned a lot of beans the last two years. So, this year, we didn't plant as many green beans because the green beans... We eat green beans about once a week, and sometimes more, sometimes not quite that much, and occasionally for lunch, we'll eat green beans. So, having 60 or 70 jars left is a plenty. That, that should be plenty to get me through till next year. Now, granted, I've already canned... I've canned two cannerfuls of green beans because I didn't want them to go to waste. And I've made and I've made some shuck beans. So I'm trying not to it's kind of a fine line. Like I don't want my stuff just to sit out there and go to waste. But also I don't want my stuff to sit in my basement and go to waste either. So it's just a lot of this that I'm talking about just comes from experience. You know, say, well, I put up 20 quarts of green beans last year, and we ran out by December. Well, then do some figuring in your head and figure out how much you need to get you through to the next season. You know, I didn't come into this knowing exactly how much to plant. Andy is just crazy about planting gardens. He likes to watch them grow. He don't like to eat half of it, but he likes to watch them grow. And so... I just started putting away stuff, started canning and doing freezing and different things, and then just kind of got myself in a rhythm after a few years to figure out kind of sort of how much, how much of each thing that we eat. My jams, y'all know I made strawberry and blackberry jam this year. I think I've got around, I want to say 30-ish jars of jam of both kinds that's something else that i have found just my personal experience that don't last much longer than a year like i feel like the texture gets weird um after after about a year so and that sometimes the color changes so i want enough jam to last me just until i start making it next year and those 30 jars should be plenty we eat them for breakfast i make these jam bar things um but they that that should be plenty to get us through to next season and see with growing kids it's kind of hard to estimate how much to keep because one day um well for example like the fresh sausage jacob went through a spell and he was eating sausage like it was going out of style well now he's hit a spell for like the last month month and a half he decided he doesn't like sausage anymore and i put up all this sausage which i'm not complaining i mean we're still eating it but but up all this sausage because i was like well he's loving it and i want to make sure i got plenty you know and maggie does the same thing one day she decides she likes something one day she don't so, you know, with growing kids, that's just, that's just kids for you. I've got a video of floating around out there. I believe it was from last year of how to can these here tapazio beans. A lot of people like to let them hang out there and dry. That's perfectly fine. They keep good that way. But my favorite way is canning them because they're already cooked. And I just go down there and open a jar and warm them up and there we go. Um... It's a lot of work in the summer, but we uh, really get to enjoy it in the winter. Easy meals. So I guess my main point of this video today is just to let you know that 
it don't have to be complicated for you to figure out how much to keep. And luckily right now in this society, even though we are creeping towards needing more and more of our own food for different reasons, I feel like, but that's a different video for a different day. Um, right now we're blessed that we ain't got to have it. So do some experimenting. Uh, put up what you think you should put up, you know, and then next year, see how much you got left or that you don't have left. And that's kind of the best way that I know how to, how to judge it, me personally. I put me a pot of these on for supper tonight. They're going to be good. But see, it's just like that. Instead of opening my jars that I have in the basement from last year of these, they're coming in fresh. So right now, I'm not really touching much of that in the basement at all. We're enjoying our fresh stuff. So guys, I hope you enjoyed this video today. I hope it was an encouragement to you. Um, just put up what you got and figure it out from there. That's the best way I know how to tell you to do it. It don't have to be complicated. And anyways, we'll see you on the next one.